Good morning. So how are you? All good? So we are now in the third Sunday of Lent. And a few weeks from now, we will be celebrating the highest or the, the zenith of the liturgical year, the Holy Week. And it is good to be reminded once again our journey of this season, a journey of conversion, a journey of repentance, a journey of forgiveness. And Jesus, in the Gospel of today, gives us again another, another parable about, regarding the parable of the fig tree. But prior to that, but before that, he gives us two particular examples. These two particular examples would tell us that all of us are sinners. Oftentimes, we say, oh, in the eastern state, they have floods. We are lucky here in WI, we don't have. Is that so? Some, some people would think about it, that they are more sinner, sinners on that area than us. But Jesus said, no. That is not the case. Because in the eyes of God, we are all sinners and we need to be redeemed by Him. We need Jesus. That's why in our gospel, it reminding us again and again that we need conversion, that we need to repent our own sins. But the question is, how? How do we have this conversion? In the first reading, it gives us the idea what to do. If you want to be converted, let us remember this one. We are sinners and we need God. But here in the first reading, it tells us it is God who is the one who is reaching us. Supposed to be, it is, it is us. But it's, it's God who is opening His arms to each one of us. That's why in the first reading, the book of Exodus, God called Moses to be the spokesperson of the Lord. And what Moses, and, and according to the conversation, Moses said, what should I tell to the people? Who are you? What God said, just tell them, I am who I am. He doesn't tell the name. But the point is, it is God who is reaching us. God is the one who is welcoming us. He, it's God who is have this initiative so that we can have the conversion, so that we can have the salvation. God is opening His arms. That's why in our, con in, in our journey of this land and this moment of conversion and repentance, let us always remember, it is God who do the initiative, the first move, so that we can be converted. It's a beautiful reminder for each one of us this season of Lent. A season where we can open our hearts because the first one who opened his heart is the Lord himself. And if you go to the second reading, in the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, in the first reading, it is God who is reaching us out. He is the one who is welcoming us. In the second reading, it tells us that the Lord is preventing us not to fall into sin and not to fall into darkness of our lives. See? We are the one who commits sins, yet the Lord is the one who is doing something for each one of us. 
He reached out. Now He is preventing us so that we cannot fall to temptation. That's why the Lord is preventing us not to desire bad things, but to desire heavenly things. We remember that in the medical things, what usually they said, prevention is better than cure. And the Lord is preventing us. And sin leads to death, but repentance leads to salvation. That's why the Lord is asking us to be converted, to repent. And the Lord is reminding us again and again that He is the one who do the first move, and He is the one who is preventing us not to fall into sin. A great God, a beautiful God. And this God of ours is really a God of mercy. That's why in the psalm, what is our psalm? The Lord is kind and merciful. He do the initiative. He's the one who prevents us not to commit sin because He is the Lord of kindness. He is the God of mercy. If we miss the opportunity, it's up to us. That's why, again and again, go back to ourselves. That's why in the gospel, would tell us, go back to ourselves. God gives us the opportunity. Just like the fig tree. The owner said, I'm going back every year for three years. But this fig tree doesn't give me fruit. Cut it down, what the gardener said. And if you look at the gardener, it is like Jesus who intercedes, who mediates. The gardener said, Lord, leave it for one year. I will manure it, cultivate it. And I hope this next year, there will be fruits. And if not, you will cut it down. It's a beautiful reminder. Again, we see in the first reading, second reading, God is the one who do the initiative. He is preventing us not to commit sin. But in the gospel, it tells us, the Lord do everything, we must do our part. What is our part? To bear fruit, to be converted, to change our ways, to follow the ways of Jesus. God did everything. And the gospel is telling us, we must be responsible, we must do our part as people of God, or else you will be cut off from salvation. That's why every Sunday we gather together by doing our part. Attending the Mass is an opportunity to bear fruit, to nourish our faith, to be converted again and again so that we will not be cut off from the grace and from the love and from the mercy of God. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this Mass, let us remember, the Lord did everything. He reached out. He prevented us to commit sin. Now, the Lord is asking us to bear fruit, to be converted, to repent, our own sins. As, as we continue, let us pray that the good Lord will help us 
so that we can have fruit in due season. Amen.